We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Burrit. And how are you guys doing? I hope you had an amazing last week and you're definitely going to have an amazing this week and yeah. So, how was my week, y'all? How was my week? How was my week? It was good. I did a lot. Did I do a lot? I'm trying to think. What happened this week? Like, I feel like I'm off of my weeks right now. But anyway, I had a pretty good week. Me and my husband, we went out to eat a lot this week. We had a lot going on because a lot happened with him. So, we got to spend a lot of time together this week. This weekend is Halloween, but on Halloween, I decided to put on my Christmas tree. I actually just put on my Christmas tree right before I started filming. Well, I didn't put decorations on it. I just put it up because I wanted it up to inspire me to buy the decorations. And I also don't like being, like, last minute with shit, especially something like that. I thought the Christmas tree would take longer to put up for some reason, but it was not easy to put up. So, fake Christmas tree is not a real Christmas tree. I never grew up having a real Christmas tree. I don't see nothing wrong with it, though, but I know that it's messy. I remember, like... When I lived in um, this apartment in the style on Macon Street, the people downstairs would get real Christmas trees. And when they would try to dispose of it, they would make a mess. Like, all the leaves would fall off of it. But I heard it smells really good in the house. But I just feel like, ain't nothing wrong with a fake Christmas tree. And it looks really, really nice. It's a really big tree. I think I even spoke about buying a Christmas tree, like last year like I told y'all because I bought it after Christmas so I bought a Christmas tree off the Facebook marketplace you guys ever shopped on the Facebook marketplace the Facebook marketplace fell off but during COVID I know a lot of people wouldn't want to shop but whatever I was during COVID because everybody was leaving New York City the Facebook marketplace was serving the girls you hear me but now it fell off like everybody want to live here Ain't nothing on the marketplace. I was trying to get me a new dresser drawer. They don't got nothing on there. Ain't shit up there. Because, bitch, ain't nobody moving. And this is not a time for moving. This is not, like, a popular moving time. Like, people don't really move, you know, when winter is coming. So, whatever. So, yeah, we put up the Christmas tree. It got lights on it. It comes with lights already on it. So, it's still kind of cool. It has the lights on it. Like... I might light it up tonight or whatever. And I was just like, oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. I like it. I'm happy. It's a big ass tree. I think it's seven and a half feet. I was even, so I'm like, can this tree fit? I just wanted a tree that was bigger than me. Anybody that know me, <laughs> no, I'm very tall. I'm six feet. So I didn't want no six foot tree. I want a tree that's bigger than my ass. Hello, good morning. Why the tree gotta be my height? So I wanted a big ass tree. We found the space for in the house. I wish we had like a house, like an apartment that was like, we, we could put it somewhere that as soon as people walk in, they could see it, but whatever. Most people, like, they don't have that luxury of putting a Christmas tree like somewhere where you could see it immediately. So whatever. But yeah, are you guys getting excited for Christmas? Y'all on Halloween, bitch. I'm already on Christmas. Hello, good morning. I put up my tree. I'm shaking off the demons for Halloween. I put up my tree on Halloween, bitch. Um, Halloween. I didn't do anything for Halloween. I always tell you every year I haven't done anything for Halloween since college. Um, I'm very in between about Halloween now that I'm older. It's a weird feeling, you know. Um, I'm just like, you know, very in touch with God. So I just feel like Halloween is demonic. But then I'm like, dang, if I have kids, I might want to dress them up. Because kids look cute as fucking costumes. I'm not trick-or-treating. That's what we not finna fucking do. Like, imagine me knocking on somebody's fucking door. Even if I live in the sub... Oh, and I have this thing. I don't like candy. A lot of, like, I don't know if people know this. I don't know if I brought this up on the show before. But, um... I don't like sweet candy. I don't like the smell of it. I don't like wrappers. Oh, I just... I don't know. I think something happened in my life. I think something happened in my childhood with that shit. I don't like seeing candy wrappers on the floor. I don't like the smell of like sweet ass candy like something about like the ones that's very potent like ugh. like my husband he bought like sour candy like something he bought like some watermelon that shit stink to me like ugh I just hate the smell of candy I love chocolate me and chocolate are friends I'll do chocolate any day dark white milky bitch I do chocolate you feel me but Candy, ugh, I hate it. So I just feel like 
I don't know. I don't want, you know, I've eaten candy. When I was younger, I had the opportunity to eat candy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why I don't like it anymore. I don't like Starburst. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. I don't know why I'm so traumatized from candy. I just don't like that shit. Um, I feel bad because I'm like, if my kids don't like to eat candy, they should be able to eat candy. But just, they can't bring that shit in my house. Period. You can eat that shit out on the street with your friends. Okay? But you can't bring it in my house. <laughs> That's the type of time I'm fucking old, bitch. Like... I don't like candy. And I'm like, that's kind of mean, but it's not because I know people, like, I know people who parents dead didn't let them drink soda, juice. Like, I remember I met somebody. I forgot. Was it in high school? No, it wasn't high school. It was, it was college. He was like, he doesn't like juice or soda because his parents never let him drink it. So he just hates it now. Like, he hates soda. He doesn't get why people like soda. It doesn't seem like he's traumatized from it, you know, but... I don't know. I just don't like candy. That's number one. Number two, I just don't want to go trick-or-treating. I think I have... I, I grew up in New York City. I never... I went trick-or-treating once. My mother put us, brought us to the white neighborhood and we went trick-or-treating. I remember that. I remember that very distinctively. We went with her friend Cheryl. I remember it very distinctively. But I don't... Talk about knocking on people's door. I mean, because I grew up in New York City. Like, maybe if I grew up in, like, a more suburban area where it's, like, a lot of houses... That wouldn't be so not normal to me, but I just, I don't know. And ever since COVID, I don't know. I don't feel, motherfuckers is crazy. What my mother used to do also, she would bring us to the muse museum. So I remember one time we went to the Brooklyn Museum. They had something for Halloween and we collected candy there. I feel like that's a safe environment. Um, and one time we went to FAO Sports. I don't know if you guys know what that is. That's a toy store. And they have something for Halloween. We went to FAO Sports for Halloween. And you could collect candy there. And you could see toys and shit. And get people to spend their fucking money. So it was nice. Like that I would do. But I'm like so indecisive about Halloween. And like kids. And like uh, like uh. It's like a weird thing to think about. Because you know. You know what is a private kids of shit that you was able to do. You know what I'm saying. And Halloween is fun. Like I remember one time my mother did not give me a costume for Halloween. I was just telling family about this. And I don't know what grade I was in, but I went to school and it was only like three kids who didn't have a costume on. And they didn't even let us know that it was a Halloween thing. Like, and then we wasn't in the classroom. We had to make, first of all, this is mad racist. They made us make a little Indian tribal headbands since we didn't have costumes or whatever. We got to make like, um, <laughs> bitch, we got to be Indians. This is not me in Native American community. This was my school at the time. You know, this, we wasn't progressive as we were now. So they made us make, um... What's those things called? The headbands with the feathers on it and stuff. The head, the headdress, or whatever. They make up, made us make that so that we didn't feel um, unincluded. But I was tight because I didn't. Honestly, I I don't feel like she, my mom did it intentionally. I think she kind of forgot, and I wasn't really pressed on her about it. I don't remember being like, "Mommy, I want a costume." Like I just remember coming to school and be like, "Oh shit, I don't got a costume." And everybody got on a fucking costume. And then it was like three of us who didn't, not three of people in my class, but the other two people, you could tell it was religious based why they didn't have a costume. My ass, it just gave, it was like, I was broke ass bitch. So I was like kind of annoyed by that and I didn't like not being included. So I went with my kids to not feel included, but I'm just like, I don't know. This is too big of a topic. I wonder what y'all do. I know there's some people who are Jehovah Witness, they don't celebrate no holidays or maybe some people who are really Christian based and they just don't do fucking Halloween. So, I don't know. I'm curious to see, you know. I wonder how people play with that holiday, especially with children and stuff. And it's all about how you, you know, educate your kids and what you tell them and how you make them feel about it. And tell them, like, don't feel unincluded just because you're not celebrating Halloween and shit like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> That went on longer than I thought. Another thing I wanted to bring up too, I saw I think a school in, what's that place? Washington, the state of Washington, uh, banned Squid Game costumes. And I was, I was, I was a for it because, sorry y'all. The thing is with Squid Games, I feel like that movie is mad fucking crazy. Or show, series, whatever the fuck you want to call it. That shit is bugged the fuck out clean, like... I don't know if this, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm really spoiling anything, but I'll say spoiler alert, but, um, it's very gruesome, like, I couldn't even finish Squid Games, I've been watching that shit periodically, like, week by week, like, weeks, not even week by week, like, maybe three weeks, then I watch an episode, like, 
it's too gruesome. Like, and it's like, I feel like a kid can't fully comprehend that show. Like, all right, what horror movies, there's usually the monster. So we know the monster is a bad person and he's trying to kill everyone. And now we trying to kill his ass because he's a monster. So it's like, all right, the kids could understand that because people were trying to compare it to like, you know, all these horror movies. You get what I'm saying? But Squid Games, there's no real monster. Like that that movie has a bigger understanding to it. You would have to fully explain that to a kid. A young kid, unless they're a genius, a baby genius, cannot watch that movie and fully understand what the fuck is going on. It just looks like they're killing motherfuckers while they're playing games. That's what the... Like, if I was a kid, I'd be watching that shit like, why the fuck they killing people? Why they taking people fucking organs? Like, no. If a kid watched that movie, that shit is bugged the fuck out. Like, you're bugging if you let your kid watch that movie. I'm sorry, like... It's no, like, you, oh, you could have them watch it, but you're gonna have to explain to them what the fuck going on. Like, that's crazy. Like, that's crazy. Like, no, I don't agree with that shit. If you made your kid watch that movie, I know we not supposed to tell people how to raise their kids and shit, but you, 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 shit. That's on you. That's on you. But for me, I wouldn't have my kid watching that fucking movie. I barely could handle that damn movie. And I'm a grown ass woman. Think about being a grown ass woman. <laughs> Man, I should say in the beginning, my B day is coming up. My birthday, this episode comes out November first. My birthday is in nine days. Oh my gosh, I can't believe my birthday is in nine days. Like that's crazy. Like that's like oh my gosh, like tomorrow. And I don't know. I'm going to be thirty. Thirty is like a pinnacle age for people. You know, I feel like mm, it's thirteen or fourteen pinnacle. I don't know which one people take more seriously, but I'm gonna say fourteen, then sixteen, then eighteen. Then I feel like 21. 25 is very pinnacle too. I feel like because you know it's like ooh, ooh I'm 25 bitch. And then 30. So 30 is a big age. And then after that that's when it just take longer. Then it's just 40. Then it's 50. And then after 50 don't nobody give a fuck about your stupid ass no more. <laughs> maybe 80. I feel like 80 is kind of celebratory. You know maybe after 50. Because I'm like what do you give a fuck about after 50? Nothing. 50 is like bitch I'm 50. And after that, don't nobody care. But, um, yeah, I'm about to be 30. I'm not doing nothing too crazy. I got a lot of shit on my plate. I wanted to book a massage, but I have wanted to book the massage a little later in my life. So I'm just like, mm, should I do it for my birthday or not? Nah? I'll figure it out. I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me get some stuff planned. But I'm keeping it very chill. I don't, I feel like I see a lot of people doing 30 big or whatever. Um... But me, I just, I just, number one, I don't like dealing with people. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I feel like every time I try to celebrate my birthday, I'm like, why the fuck did I do this shit? That's the type of person I am. Like, why the fuck did I plan anything? Like, I, I just, I just hate this organization. I hate, like, I look like the type of person that like planning shit. Because when I plan shit, I do do it pretty big. But it's a lot on me, like, when I plan stuff and I like to make sure everything is really nice, everything look good. I end up spending more money than I think I'm going to spend. Um, I would go to parties. I'm like, what the fuck? Why did I do this dumb shit? I get too drunk. It's just like, I just I just don't want to do it. Not this year. Maybe next year. I'll probably try to do something for 31. Even though 31 is not a pinnacle age, but yeah. I just, I just don't want to be stressed out. I can't afford to be. <laughs> Honestly, you'll find out later. But, um... Yeah, like, I'm not in the mood for that shit this year. I've been through enough last year, bitch. So this year, I'm just like, bitch. Uh, it sounds like a good idea. But then it ain't. I'm just like, fuck, if I ain't everybody, then motherfuckers gonna flake. Then if motherfuckers don't flake, motherfuckers gonna get my nerves. You know, I love everybody. I love everybody. You know that. But we all flawed. I'm flawed too, bitch. People probably write me somewhere and I get on their fucking nerves. Who knows? So, yeah, I just was like, uh, eh, whatever. Don't want to do anything big for 30. Even my mom's asking me, like, what you want for your birthday? I'm like, honestly, nothing. I don't. I don't need nothing. I know some of y'all like, bitch, you better figure something out. But I really just, I just, I'm mad chill. Like, I'm happy with everything I've got. You know, um, everything I have. I'm happy. You know, I'm pleased. Of course, things can be better. The, the, but those are things that'll fix over time. So, yeah. My birthday is basically, is it? I wouldn't say it's next week because next week is 6, 7, 8. Yeah, my birthday is next, next week, Monday. <laughs> next, next week, Wednesday type shit. So, yeah. 
but yeah that was my week that was my life that was very long love that and let's see what's going on in the scuttle of it all so this week you know i have to talk about fucking jada pink and ass okay <sighs> prayers so she basically alluded let me let me get my facts straight but people were saying she didn't really say that shit or whatever but I just feel like just watch what the fuck you say like watch I mean if if I don't know let's let's just get into it it says Jada Pinkett Smith open up opens up on the difficulty of maintaining a healthy sex life with Will Smith or whatever the case may be I feel like this we all well I would hope we all feel like this you shouldn't be talking about your sex life with your husband on no type of platform or saying, you know, you you had to teach or you had to show your husband what it is you like. I feel like people say that and that's fine. Like, I, but I wouldn't say I had to. I would say I think you have to, like, show your husband what it is you like in the bedroom and shit like that. Like, don't make it, don't make it like you talking about your husband directly type shit because that shit is fucked up. And even when that shit happened with, um, oh boy... What's that nigga name? The, the crazy one? When that shit happened, y'all don't talk about the entanglement shit. Even when she did the interview with Will Smith, he looked like he wanted to fucking cry. Alright? Like, we was making memes of his fucking face, but that nigga looked like he dead ass wanted to cry. Like, dead ass. Like, his eyes was bloodshot red. I don't know if he wanted to cry or if he wanted to fucking curse Jada Pinkett out. Like, I don't know what the fuck was going on, but you could tell, like... Like, it's too much. Like, it's too... She doing... Then she always talking about fucking Tupac. Like, she... Like, I, I get he passed away, but bitch, you're married. Like, some shit you can't say publicly. And I get that they celebrities, but come on, be mindful of the shit you say. Like, have some respect. The fuck? Like, it's just... I don't know. I just... It's giving me weirdo vibes. I don't know if she want a divorce. I don't know what they want to do. Maybe they might get divorced soon, you know. A lot, and that's the other thing social media really brought to light how fraudulent uh, a lot of these celebrities are. Everything is not what it seems. Not just celebrities, regular day people, me, you, us, we, they, them. How we all are just regular day ass people. Um, People looked up to Jada and Will like that was just like you'd be like I want a Jada and Will relationship like you could tell their relationship was good bitch how we knew their relationship was good because they said it was like but now shit coming out the woodworks out of nowhere people got platforms they want to talk about their marriage and shit and the shit not looking good oh his name was August Alcina it just hit my head but yeah she fucking August Alcina why he he that that situation is fucking messy. Okay, she was grooming that little man. Okay, that I didn't like that. That shit was wild messy. And I'm surprised. That really went under the radar. I feel like we talked about it, but it went under the radar because I think it went so under the radar that she was dead ass fucking with August Alcina when he was dealing with mental health issues because it's it, her situation of being with a Will Smith is such a more bigger topic than the fact that to us, I'm not saying that it is, I'm saying to the world, her being married to Will Smith, one of the biggest actors, not black actors, actors, period. Her cheating on a man like that is so much bigger than her who she cheated with. Like, that's what we care about. That's all we give a fuck about. You get what I'm saying? But the fact that she was fucking that, that young boy and... He was dealing with mental health issues and going through depression and lost his mother. Like, I mean, not lost his mother. I'm so sorry. But he was dealing with so much and she started having sex with him. Like, that shit is wild. She let that nigga live in her house. That shit weird as fuck. Jada Pinkett Smith, she another one. She on my fucking list, bitch. I ain't fucking with her ass. Okay? I don't know. Y'all can fuck with her. She up to no good. She up next. I think she up next. And I heard some shit about her when she was 21. Don't quote me. She was fucking a 15-year-old boy from Criss Cross. She a fucking next. She about to be on the fucking list. And she gonna fuck up the Me Too movement. Cause you know niggas can't wait to catch a bitch slipping, honey. Yes, y'all always talking about men be doing this, men be doing that. Jada Pinkett Smith is fucking young niggas. And y'all not saying nothing, but y'all keep screaming, Me Too, Me Too. Wait, wait till that shit hit the streets. That shit gonna hit the fan real fucking soon. That Jada Pinkett Smith is giving very much perverted vibes. Pedophilia. Okay, moving on. 
So, which one I want to talk about first? I'll talk about Fetty Wap first. The Fetty Wap uh, going to jail for drug trafficking. I don't know why all of y'all motherfuckers are so surprised. I've been getting a lot of surprise reactions like, why the fuck is he selling drugs? When was the last time Fetty Wap put out a motherfucking hit? I'm like, damn, she fine, on her and she'll be mine, won't be mine. Yo, he had a moment, and he put Remy Martin back on the map. <laughs> yo, yo, he had a moment, like, I remember he was coming out with hit after hit after hit, and the songs were so lit, like, this was around the time when I was going to the club, it was like, when that song came on, any Fetty Wap song came on, when any Fetty Wap song came on on the radio, what? But then he got too excited, started fucking all these bitches. Remember, this nigga got hot. I started fucking having kids back to back to back. It was like within a matter of months. He said, I'm a celebrity. I'm fucking raw. <laughs> okay, I'm getting money. I'm having kids. And then fell off. I was like, Jesus. And you know he got fucking, um... Probably got a, well, I don't know if he's on child support, but I'm pretty sure he still has to support his kids whether he's on child support. He got kids to feed, mouths to feed, he ain't make a hit in mad long. When's the last time he made a song? Like, I don't even know, I remember he did a song with DJ Envy, that song was good, but then he ain't show up to the performance at the powerhouse. Like, what the fuck? So y'all thought that he was just going, a lot of people forget, like, celebrities don't be having all this money, like, they got bills to pay, they got a lifestyle to upkeep. Their job is music, right? You know how, like, our job is what our job is, and if we lose that shit, we don't get no income? If he stop making music, he loses his income. Income gone. Money gone. And you know half these celebrities don't be, they be crying to own their masters, and they fucking royalties and shit, so... I was just like, I'm not surprised this motherfucker started selling drugs again, or, or started selling drugs. I don't know if he was a drug dealer before, bitch. I mean, allegedly. But I was like, look... What the fuck you expect? What you thought he was going to do? Get a regular day job? So, shout outs to... Not shout outs. I don't know. Prayers. Prayers to um him. Hopefully everything get figured out, child. I don't fucking know. And last but not least. That fucking Young Miami rap freak shit was raka. Raka. I don't know what y'all bitches was hype about that shit for. This bitch was running away from the beat. She was mad off beat. I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, y'all gotta stop. Y'all be hyping shit up. Why? Because she brought up P. Diddy and 50 Cent and all these niggas and fucking Meg Thee Stallion. Like, that shit was horrific. That was the worst shit I heard in a couple of years, bitch. Like, it's just like, I, first of all, I couldn't even finish listening to it because she was so off beat. Like, it gave me very mediocre mixtape like you know how like somebody in the hood is trying to become a rapper and they come out with their first song that's what it gave me like like no no who signed off on that i don't give a fuck it, what the fuck she was talking about doing and i thought it was mad crazy when she said i want to sit on p diddy face like them roaches like girl girl y'all think that shit sexy i thought it was funny i didn't think it was sexy i just i can't I love music, so I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, and I won't. Y'all cannot compare that to Little Kim shit. Y'all cannot compare that to Nicki Minaj, uh, Barbie Dreams. Like, that shit, no, we not doing that. We not doing that. Like, that shit was so offbeat, I couldn't even finish listening to it because I can't. If I can't keep up with you, I can't listen. Like, I can't. Mm -mm. She needs to go back to the drawing board with that shit. Y'all can keep it. <laughs> Y'all can take it. That shit was trash, my mom. I'll tell you that off the bat. Like, you cannot... Y'all be settling for whack shit, and this this is why music is gonna get trash. Like, I don't give a fuck. Your bars could be amazing. If that shit is off beat, I'm not listening to that shit. What the f... Like, why was she rapping like that? I'm not doing that. And everybody was in an uproar. Y'all hear some freaky shit from a pretty girl. Y'all get excited. Like, you're not doing that. That was a big gigantic dub zero for me. You know, that's just not that was just me. I didn't feel like it was that exciting. Um, 
I feel like it maybe would have had potential if she was on beat. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, Brittany, I think you really think this shit is whack because it sounds like she can't rap. Because when a rapper rap off beat, it just automatically seems like they a trash rapper. <laughs> like, so I was just like, maybe. I'll, probably, I'll listen to see if she had bars on that shit, but it's a no for me. <laughs> but y'all can keep that. Anyway, <laughs> that was a, a long beginning. So, what are we talking about this week? What is today's topic? So, today's topic is when to be risky, getting up and moving to another state, investing in yourself. Are you being risky or traditional? So, that's what we're talking about or whatever. Um, I want to talk about being risky because... I feel like people are risky and it's funny I'm talking about this because a lot of risky shit been happening like not well not a lot but enough like I have a couple of people in my life you know I don't want to tell their business because I don't know if they want people to know their business but I got a friend she's getting up she's moving she's leaving New York City um and she did it very I wouldn't say sudden but she did it in a risk taker way let's just put it that way um and then she was telling me she knows somebody in her family that want to move but the person doesn't want to take that risk. But mind you, these all these episodes were pre-planned. But it's just funny how it like aligns with my life lately. Um, I'm scared to take risk lately, especially lately. And we will we'll talk about that. Um, yeah, I feel like a lot of us are scared to take risks, take jumps, take leaps. Or uh, we think we're taking risks, but we're not going full force in to our risk. Risk. You know, quote, I'm putting up quotation marks for those of you listening. Because I don't know how we all view risk and being risky. But I feel like two people feel like they took a risk. But did you really take a risk? So, we're going to talk We're gonna talk about being risky. Okay? We're going to get into that today. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, how do I feel? Lately, I'm not that much of a risk taker at all. I feel like, um, I went through so much last year that I'm scared to take risks going forth. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've been through losing a job, um, I wouldn't say that. I was going to say losing apartments, but just like doing risky ass shit. I've been through quitting jobs, um, losing money. Put, investing money in things, losing that money, um, and then I'm getting older and I'm like, uh, I kind of want to save, I kind of want to pay down bills, I kind of don't want to just get up and be risky anymore, you know, I have different plans, different ideas, when you're married, you got to think about other people, you got to think about your spouse, you can't just think about yourself, um, so you got to be really mindful of how you do things, and that's the thing too, with being a risk taker is that, it's really good to take those chances and those risks in your 20s when you're younger and you're not really even thinking about kids, starting a family, or whatever. Do all that shit now because um, as you get older, you do have to be really, 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 really careful about how you um do shit. Because, um, yeah, you have to be really careful. Um, not careful... But you just got, you, look, at the end of the day, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But I feel like as you get older, you are kind of mindful of how you make choices and decisions. Like, even when you do shit on a limb, you still thinking about how you doing it on a limb. Like, before you do shit that's a little risky, you be like, mm, I, don't, I can't lose but so much in it. Like, you'll think about how much loss you'll have in it before you do it, but still do it. Like, if the, the, the risk is not that high, you might still do the shit type shit. So, I, I just feel like... You know, I, and I, hey, for some people, they grown as fuck and they still be being risky as fuck, bitch, doing what the fuck they want to do. And that's on you. It, 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 we'll talk about that. <laughs> but for me, I mean, I'm not scared to a certain extent to do things, but I feel like for me, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. Like, certain things just have to take place for me to be a risk taker. Like, I'm not going to just do shit just to do it. Like, I have to do shit with a reason like if I feel like oh I want to get up and leave or I want to I don't fucking know I want to start a business I gotta have a really 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 good reason as to why I want to do that shit like I'm not the type of person I just wake up and be like 
I'm leaving. I'm uh, like I'm not like that. I would I wouldn't consider myself that. Um, so I couldn't really find much articles on like you know just being a risk taker in general. But I did find an article on Forbes.com called "Why Successful Entrepreneurs Need to Be Calculated Risk Takers," and I think you can read articles like that and still correlate it with normal day life. So. You know, before most topics, what do we like to do? Expand our minds. Expand your mind, expand your mind, expand your mind. So, an article on Forbes.com titled, Why Successful Entrepreneurs Need to Be Calculated Risk Takers, written by Chris Carosa, states... Let me go back. When you talk to people about what it takes to be an entrepreneur, most people will say you need to be a risk taker. When you talk to people about what it means to be a risk taker, most people will begin describing daredevils and gamblers. In both cases, these answers are at best incomplete, if not totally incorrect. Risk taking is fundamental to sound investing without risk. There could be no return. It actually, it's actually as simple as the law of supply and demand. Here's an example. Would you run across a busy seven lane interstate for a dollar? Probably not. Would you take that chance if the payoff was a million dollars? Maybe would. Many would, sorry. If the reward is too small, it's not worth the risk required to obtain it. If the reward is large enough, you'll be willing to take on more risk to obtain it. This is called the risk return trade-off and it forms the basis of portfolio theory, the bedrock of modern investing. Nobel Prize winner Harry Markowitz is credited with first articulating this according to Markowitz, the basic concepts of portfolio theory came to me one afternoon in the library while reading John Bird Williams' Theory of Investment Value. Entrepreneurs make decisions just like stock investors. The only difference is entrepreneurs invest in their own businesses while stock investors invest in other people's companies. Since risk and return are two peas in the same pod, you can't define risk solely in terms of its daredevil persona or its relevance to gambling. Likewise, an entrepreneur is not necessarily a risk taker. Successful entrepreneurs know how to manage risk. Okay. So, what one of the things I uh, like is that they talk about if the reward is too small, then it's not worth the risk. But if the reward is large, then it is, you know, kind of worth the risk. And I think that with being risky, a lot of times people need to think about that. Like, how big can this this decision help me? Like, how... How helpful is decision? How helpful is this business? Can how helpful can this business be? Any business can be a big reward if, as long as you you know put that time and investment into that business or whatever the case may be. Um, but for instance, like moving, you know, I know we live in a big city, New York City. I live in a big city, and um, sometimes a lot of people are dying to live here you know what I'm saying just dying to survive honey just 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 it's just it is getting worse it's becoming a lot and um some people would rather stay here and struggle than you know go to another state and maybe get on your feet that reward is big if you could get cheaper rent save more money come back to New York if you like or even to, you know, I'm not shade in New York City. I love the city. I grew up here. I was born and raised here. But um, even in terms of living conditions, bitch. Like the rent here be like $2,400, $3,000, $4,000 depending on where you live, what type of apartment you live in, what type of building you live in. And your neighborhood could still be a little janky. You know what I'm saying? It's giving very much dirty. It's giving very much uncleansy. And you could go somewhere that's kind of, you know... Suburban, like for instance, I went to Minnesota. Could I live in Minnesota? Probably not. But when I went there, one of the things I really loved was that it was clean. 
I did. I really did. I feel like everybody was kind of mad chill. I remember I told you, I was like, I was kind of shocked that George Floyd thing happened here. Like, it was just giving me very much clean, chill vibes. You drive to go get what you need. It was just, it was the cleansiness for me. And I get that they have less people there. We have way more people in New York City. But you, you know, sometimes certain shit get old. Like, if I could tell y'all, I'm pretty sure y'all see stuff on social media with the rats running around, bitch. Garbage places. Like, people just dirty. But then the rent high. So, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? So, my thing is, is like, people just dying to live out here. I get it. It's job opportunities. And to be honest, to be really, really honest... The competition is crazy out here. So, yeah, you could get a job out here. Let's be real. Let's be real. In New York City, you could get a job, right? But you could get an everyday job. You get a job working at McDonald's. You get a job working at Fellow 21. You could get that job probably today. They'll hire you today. And that's like in most states anyway. But I hate when people say there's so much opportunity here. Like, but at what cost? I feel like. I'm going to be honest, as a white person, there's mad opportunity here. You could come here and be white and have a dope-ass resume and an education and probably get a job within a few months, okay? If you come here and you're black, you're going to have to work double hard. You're going to be living with five, eight motherfuckers out here. They're going to be stressing you the fuck out. About two of the motherfuckers are going to be white, maybe not, and it's going to be hard. The competition is crazy out here. People is moving here by the fucking bundles. Like, and you up against not just New Yorkers. You up against somebody who moved from California. Somebody who moved from Wyoming. Somebody who moved from Colorado. Somebody who moved from North Dakota who's moving here to New York. With a dope ass resume. You up against so much people. So people come here and like, it's all this opportunity out here. It is. But your chances of getting those positions are so... It's just so, the probabilities are so low. I'm going to be honest with you. You up against a lot of people. I mean, you could get shit done. I mean, you could probably find a gig and, you know, and you could have fun out here. It's a lot of restaurants. It's, it's always activities to do. It's always things to do out here. But you also, you got to also kind of like learn to like fuck with yourself too because you got to remember people be like especially as you get older you might think that people want to go places with you they don't want to go places with you all the time you know you might have to learn how to just roam the city yourself and have fun and that's possible too and that's dope but i say all that to say people want to come to these big cities you want to live in these big cities you want to stay close to your family or shit it's people who live in small cities right and your city just not serving the girls at all. Like, you barely can find a motherfucking gig, bitch. You're bored all the time. The, the you, you feel like you're living in poverty. Because small towns give very much poverty, too, depending on what's, what small city you live in or whatever. Um, and I get that. And so you want to get the big city life or maybe a medium city life. You want to live somewhere. You want to live somewhere in the city. Maybe you want to live in a Houston or Austin. What else is a, a big city? Salt Lake City. I don't fucking know. You, maybe you want to live in fucking Los Angeles, you know, and, and you want to take that risk and find an opportunity because, the, yes, your hometown is just too small. It's too small. It's not even much to do. The only job you can get is at the fucking warehouse, bitch, or at the call center. I get that. I get that completely. And I think those are times where you need to take risk, you know what I'm saying? So I get that. It's two ends of the spectrum. It's the small town spectrum and the big town spectrum, right? If you out here living in this big city and you struggle, double buggle, okay? You struggle, double buggle, okay? You need to come up with a game plan. Like, at some point, I know you want to stay with your friends, you want to stay with your family, but people who will fuck with you will still come visit you. Um, I'm pretty sure when you come back, you're going to visit your friends and family. You can always fly back down, drive back down. I don't know what you want to do, but there's always, you know, different alternatives, you know. There's so many ways you can move on with your life and still be close to your friends and family. That's up to you and that's also up to your friends and family. You know, if they want to keep that relationship. And that's just that on that. And in terms of investing in businesses, business is risky. Period. Like, I hate people... 
who try to start a business and they feel like they're gonna make a million dollars immediately and they feel like they can't invest any money like if you're making a business you have to put money in it like that's just what it is you might have to take out a loan i don't know but you in some way you're gonna have to spend money like you gotta get material i don't know what you your game plan is any business is starting a podcast you gotta get a camera you gotta get a mic you gotta get so much stuff you gotta do you gotta get editing tools and all this other not you need a fucking laptop bitch maybe you never had a laptop you're investing in yourself you gotta pay for stuff you start a business you want to sell fucking lipstick you're gonna have to find a vendor you're gonna have to pay for your, in your uh, inventory you're gonna have to pay for all that shit so the thing with that when i was saying in the beginning was that some people don't take on risk fully is I feel like a lot of times, like especially with business, people be like, I took a risk. I opened a business. Why? Because you bought lipstick and then you made an Instagram page and maybe a website and then you asked people to buy it and nobody bought it. But you feel like you took a risk. You didn't take a risk. You didn't market that business. You didn't keep trying even when nobody bought your shit. You didn't. That's To me, that's not taking a risk. Anybody could fucking buy shit, especially today. Go on fucking Alibaba. Buy some fucking lipstick, throw a fucking uh, stick on that shit, call it fucking Britney's lipstick, and then say, oh, I sell lipstick now. But did you fully, 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 fully invest yourself into that business? Like, full hardcore, besides making an Instagram page. Did you go out in the trenches? Did you try to go uh, start selling your lipstick at fucking trade shows and, and, and go into shows and festivals and say, look, can I be a vendor at your show? Invest in yourself. You got to pay that $500 vendor fee, which you're like, hmm, I might get a sale type shit. Let me get a table. Like, did you really, really try? Did you try to send your shit to um, influencers or people you thought was cute? Like, you know what I'm saying? Did you try? Did you really take on that risk? Because I hate when people be like, yeah, I opened a business. Did you really? Did you try? Did you spend bredo? Because just buying the inventory ain't just the only amount of money the bread is spent. Did you did you just take pictures on your phone? And I'm not shading nobody because you can take some flyers pictures on these iPhones. But did you do that work? Did you go on YouTube and find out what equipment you need to make the best iPhone product picture for your fucking Instagram page? Or did you take a fucking dusty ass picture of your fucking product? Did you take the full risk? Motherfuckers don't even want to educate themselves no more. Did you pay for a fucking photographer? Fuck it. Say, I don't want to do this iPhone shit. This ain't my spectrum. I might have to take out a credit card and ask for and get me a fucking product photographer, bitch. Did you? So you didn't take a risk. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do something, do it full head on. Whether you getting zero sales, whether you getting one sale, whether you getting two sales, keep believing in yourself i'm very firm believing that you can see i only get two or three views on my youtube page and i'm happy i get a good amount of downloads sometimes i get 10 sometimes i get 25 and i'm happy and i'm gonna keep trying and not give up you know what i'm saying you can't give up on yourself and i can speak to man listen i can speak to that not just in business just in life in general just like I won't tell y'all too much, but you could really just be a risk taker. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just the jobs you apply for, the decisions you make in your life, you know. You know, like, what? But maybe having a kid is risky for you. Is that something you want? Uh, uh, being, starting a new relationship. That could be risky. If you came out of something bad and you like, do I really want to try this shit out? Love is risky, period, right? So we could talk about being risky in relationships and dating. Hello, good morning. I think everything requires a little bit of risk. Just a tad. Like anything new, anything that's new is going to require a risk. You want to take a new job, it's going to require a risk. You want to start a new business, it's going to require a risk. You want to go to a new state, it's going to require a risk. You want to... Anything new, you want a new man, a new woman is going to require a little risk. Because you don't know what the fuck you're walking into. So I feel like all these things that I brought up are part of life. So you always going to have to be a bit of a risk taker. Oh, look at you, little Miss Risque. All of us are risque. Um, in terms of when when to not take a risk right because we can't just be like yes take a risk yes be risque 
risk for the girls. Um, when should you not take a risk, right? Um, when, like, when they said too, the reward is small, you know, or I, f I don't feel like risk is when you do shit and it's not, not necessarily though. Because I was going to say risk is when you do shit and it's not fully planned out. Because that's not true necessarily. Sometimes you could do shit and it's not fully um, planned out. I mean, sometimes you could do take a risk and it's planned out. Like some people start a business, they write a business plan, they do this. But still opening that business is considered risky no matter how much you planned it. So, I feel like it's not good to take a risk when... You don't know what the fuck you're doing. Like, I hate when people do shit like that in general. Like, let's say, for instance, you're gonna get up and move. you like, oh, I'm leaving today. Okay, bitch, where the fuck you gonna live? In my car. Fine. If you wanna be a car, dope. You found the home. <laughs> you have a home. Your car. <laughs> Step one. Okay, so what, what's the job looking like? What's your income looking like? What's your savings looking like? Zero. What's T? Okay. Love that. Thriving. So, how the fuck you gonna eventually find an apartment? Unless you wanna live in your car, you know, no shade to people who live in their car, because I heard it's a market for that. We're not shading nobody. But I'm just saying, like, do you, is that what you wanna do? If you wanna live in a car, fine, but did you, is that why you're moving? You know what I'm saying? Or, um, if you wanna start a business, oh, I wanna start a business doing, what's something trendy now that all the girls is doing? I don't know, I wanna start a business doing lashes. Okay. Is this something you want to do? Is this something you love? Is this something you fuck with? Is this something you good at? Um, no, but I know that bitch is buying lashes. Okay. Love that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Are you even a business savvy person? Do you really fuck with business? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, stop doing shit. Like, don't take risks that you know you can't even fucking do, bitch. Like, people be fucking killing me. Like, come on now. Like, I don't know. Like, you just gotta... The time you know not to take a risk is when you know, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, we all reach a point where we don't know what the fuck we're doing. Sometimes you might go a little too far. You might go a little too deep in and take a risk. You go a little too deep already. Like, some people take a risk and already done did, went mad far. Like, they already done bought the fucking lashes, bitch. They done did everything and now they're like, fuck, I'm too deep. And even then, you know, you can keep the lashes. Now you got lashes for days, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, just don't take a risk if you really dead ass don't know what the fuck you doing like just just you, you gotta know what you're doing to a certain extent so yeah you just gotta know when to take risk have a i don't i feel like i'm weirded out because i'm like can you have a vision before you take a bit uh take a risk do you need a vision before you take a risk because sometimes taking a risk just requires you believing in yourself you know what i'm saying so i don't want to say that you need a plan because then it's not really risque because you plant the shit out. You feel me? Like, if you fully planned your shit out to the T, it ain't that risky, bitch, because you planned your shit out. You feel me? I'm talking about people who just be like, I don't give a fuck. I, I don't give a fuck. But even still, to a certain extent, before you take a risk, you be like, you kind of like taking it for a reason. Like, man, fuck this shit. I'm getting tired of this shit. I'm about to do this shit. You feel me? Like, you gotta have a vision. It's like a vision, but not like a clear vision. I'm not so so it's visions and then it's a clear vision. People who have a clear vision, they done jotted the shit down, they done saved up the exact amount of money they need, they done did everything to the T. That is not fucking risky because you planned your shit out to the T. I'm talking about people who just got a vision. Like you one day you just like, man, I gonna do this shit because XYZ. You ever just think about shit like you know, I'll be good. I can do singing. I can sing. I really could sing. Like, I'm about to start doing my shit and sing. I moved to New York. Start singing. Maybe go to the studio. Man, I could sing though. I'm talented. Like, if I just get up, you know, figure it out, move, bye bye bye. Like, you know, you could sing. People tell you you could sing. Like, you really got vocals. Like, so that's like, okay, whatever. New York is a lot of record labels here or Atlanta you like nah I could really you know do a couple of shows out there like nah I'm dead ass like I'm gonna really do my shit like I'm gonna look into that shit like I, I, I like I believe in myself that to me is being risky and but you still kind of like 
you in this mode where you like, I could do it. Like, I believe in myself. Like, I can sing. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just, y'all get what I'm saying? Like, or, you know, I don't fucking know. It's just a weird feeling. Or if you come up with a reason, like, for some people, they're like, man, I'm tired of living here. You know, ain't shit going on out here for me. I need to get on my feet. I want to try something new. I deserve something new. I want something better. Maybe I can find something better out here. I've been going through mad shit for the past three, five years since I've been here. You know, I'm going to move. I want to do something better for myself. I'm going to get up and I'm going to go. That to me is like, you got a vision, but it ain't clear because you don't got no fucking game plan, but you get up and you go, bitch. But you still have a vision because you you have a purpose as to why you're doing it. So I feel like you got to have a why as to why you're doing stuff. Like, don't just like, I get it. People do shit like that every day and that's cute. It's cute for the movies, bitch. Like, if you want to live a movie life, like, I get it. Like, I always say that, like, bitch, you're a movie. Like, you want to be a movie theater. Like, you feel me? You want to be in the theaters. You want to be in the box, the bill. What's the shit called? The box office, bitch. But if you just like, I'm moving because I want to. Mm, I mean, you can. You can. You can. But I'm just like, have a vision. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Or you can say, I want to start a business because I feel like it. <laughs> we love that. But, like, what's the tea? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of be like, you know, I want to start a business because I'm tired of working for people. I always get into it with my boss. My boss is never smarter than me. Like, have, like, a reason. Like, have a purpose for your risk. At minimum. Like, have a purpose for your risk. If you got no fucking purpose for your risk, then you don't need to be taking a motherfucking risk, bitch. Like, period. You know, said, I'm always in and out of a job. I done had, like, 80 jobs this year already, bitch. I don't work well with motherfuckers. I don't work well under motherfucking people. I need to start my own business. Like, that type shit. Y'all get what I'm saying? Like, it's very... Like, you gotta have a purpose for your risk. And then you get up and you do what the fuck you gotta do. Period. You feel me? You feel me? Um... Is there anything wrong with being traditional? Now, traditional is just like you plan, you save, you, you, you're not risque. And that's fine. We thrive on the traditional girl. Okay? I wish I was so meticulous. Like, I try to be meticulous, but shit always happens, you know. Shout out to people who could just figure it the fuck out. I'm trying to be risky with my money in terms of, like, I want to just start taking money out of my check and saving it even though I know I got bills to pay. <laughs> Like, I'm trying to be on that type of risk type of shit. Like, you feel me? I'm like, I feel like I am a little risque with my money, but I want to be risque in a good way. Like, I, I, I do want to be a little more meticulous. Like, okay, I want to get this done, so I got to save this amount up, and I got to do this, and I got to do X, Y, Z, and boom, boom, boom. I feel like I used to be like that when I was, like, in my 20s, but I had less, uh, what's that called? Like, less bills, less responsibility. Now I feel like I have more responsibilities, so, and I get that. So, some of you might have a lot of responsibilities and you can't really take risks. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, this episode is not to promote being a risk taker. If you want to be a traditional mama, if you want to be very much meticulous and plan shit out properly, by all means, do it, honey. Okay? It's nothing wrong with planning. We thrive on planning. Planning is, is, is beautiful. We love it. We love it. And if you're really good at planning and, and just putting your, all your ducks in a row before you do shit, that shit is a gift. A gift from God. A person who know how to motherfucking plan. What? And really go through on that plan. You feel me? They're like, oh, I'm going to save $6,000 for XYZ. Move on motherfucking fucking April 2022. And by... By July 2022, I'ma have a job and da 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 da. And if I don't like people like that, shout outs to people like that. Like I want to make it clear that being a risk taker is not all of that. You get what I'm saying? It's all of that, but ain't all of that. And there's nothing wrong with being a planner. This is not to advocate being risque. Plan if you like to plan by all means, and you live and you could really push through on that shit. Shout outs to you. Much respect to you. I love a planner. We thrive on a planner. Yes. 
Yes, nothing wrong with being traditional. I want to talk about that too, you know. Hey, sometimes risk ain't for you. That's not your market. If you constantly being a risk taker, always jumping and doing dumb shit, and your ass ain't got shit together yet, didn't progress, still in the same place you in, this is not your space. You still the same motherfucker you was 10 years ago. You done took about 25 risk. What's that about? This is not for you. Risk taking is not for you. This is not your spectrum. Okay, you need to be more of a traditional Sally. You need to plan. You need to jot. You need to write down. You need to journal. You need to buy a fucking planner. Remember the planners, bitch? Motherfuckers used to buy planners. Never plan on nothing damn thing in that shit. Every fucking year... Every year, every new year, on the fucking uh, Instagram, like the ads and shit, they always advoc- um, promoting planners and shit. And people be buying that shit, don't plan on a motherfucking thing. Bitch, if you done took 85 risks and you still in the same spot your ass is in, when I say the same spot, you in the same motherfucking apartment, you still broke, buggle, duggle, struggle, didn't get not nothing new, a, a damn day in your motherfucking life, bitch. Your ass need to start planning. You need to buy a fucking planner. You need to buy a blank book and write down some fucking notes in that bitch, okay? And come up with a game plan, okay? Shout out to the game planners. Some of y'all need to be game planners and not risk takers, okay? Respectfully, my black ass too. I need to stop taking risks. I have given up on that life. I, I need to buy me a new book. <laughs> I'm getting me a plan on this year, bitch. <laughs> okay, you need to start writing down exactly what the fuck your ass is gonna do and how you gonna do it, and you need to stick to that motherfucking plan. Risk taking ain't for everybody, bitch. I understand you want to open a motherfucking business. That ain't for you this year. Maybe that's not for you. Maybe you can do it at the end of the year for your, your ass right now. You need to get your shit together. Some of y'all need to get in that mode too. Well, you got to be like, I don't need to open a goddamn business this year. I don't need to be about to shake up the fucking room, bitch. I don't need to be going on no vacations this year. Okay? I don't need to be doing none of that this year. Okay? I need to make a plan, a game plan, how I'm going to get up and do this and do that. Whatever it is that you want to do. Or whatever. Because sometimes you haven't even even moved a little bit in your life. You know? Or maybe you haven't moved in a while. Like, maybe the last time you did something progressively dope was fucking... What, we in 2021 now. So, what's a long time ago? That's too long. Like, maybe the last time you didn't do something progressive was 20... I don't want to, like, scare people. 2015? Is that a long time ago? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21? Yeah, it's like six years ago. And this year about to be over, so damn near seven. So, yeah, if you ain't do something since 2015, like when was the last time you did something like big, you know? Maybe it's time to start planning instead of being risque. Or, I mean, it's a, it's a weird... If you Okay, listen. If you, within 2015 into 2021, was taking risks and all your risks failed, your ass need to start planning. If from year 2015 to 2021, you didn't take any risk at all, at all, and you haven't progressed, maybe you could take a risk. You have risk eligibility. But if you done took 15 risks within 2015 to 2021, and your ass didn't do nothing, you ain't moving, shaking, you still in the same spot, you're not eligible for the risk program. There's a risk program. Only certain people is eligible, bitch. And you're not eligible. You need to do the planner. You need to get the planner. A planner. A book. A planner. <laughs> okay, you need to buy a planner. Okay, if you've been taking risk for the past five to ten years, it, and you still in the same motherfucking spot your ass was in, you gotta get a planner. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you ain't take a risk in five to ten years, you need to, you need to think about taking one. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And, and this, this episode is giving me very much should have been end of the year. Okay? But we got you. We got y'all plan. We got y'all books. We got y'all books. Or whatever. But I enjoyed this episode. <laughs> it was a very, very productive, bitch. Um, 
so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this episode i hope you guys will be taking risks i hope you guys are buying planners like we're doing it all this year we're getting organized yes serving the girls and yeah make sure you follow me on instagram underscore baritstagram make sure you subscribe what else Make sure if you're streaming, leave five stars, leave a comment, and yeah, I will see you guys when next week. Bye.